All right, so welcome to today's tutor tag lesson on equilibrium. So, well, let's take a look at a chemical reaction to describe equilibrium. Okay, so let's take a look at the reaction of hydrogen gas with, say, bromine gas gives you HBr gas and two moles of that. We have two moles of hydrogen, two moles of bromine. It's going to give us two moles of HBr, which is hydrogen bromide gas. And so when we want to describe what equilibrium is, what that means is it's very important to understand that equilibrium means that the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, and the rate just means how fast uh, the products are being created and how fast the reactants are being created. So to represent a system that has this state of equilibrium, uh, we represent it with a double arrow, indicating that HBr is forming H2 and Br2, and H2 and Br2 are forming 2HBr. And so that's what a state of equilibrium is. So you can imagine it like a waterfall. So if we had, a say, a pool of water here, and it's just a pool of water. My art skills aren't the best. And imagine that in that pool of water, you had a waterfall flowing into that pool of water. And so that's the rate of incoming. And now we notice that there's another waterfall that's pouring out. And so if the rate of the incoming water is the same as the rate of the outgoing water, then this water level is not going to change. It's going to be constant. Okay, so the water in our pool is going to be constant. So it's a constant water level. Okay, and that can be related to this chemical reaction. And so what we notice is at equilibrium, so at equilibrium, the concentrations of all species are constant. Okay, and they're not the same, but they're constant. All right, they stay the same, but the HBr is going to have maybe a different concentration than the Br2. They might have different concentrations, but they're constant. That means the HBr is not changing anymore because the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Just like the explanation here, the rate of the incoming water is the same as the rate of the outgoing water, so the water level remains constant. The rate of H2 and Br2 being created is the same as the rate of HBr being created, so their concentrations are going to remain the same and they're gonna be constant. Okay, so we could also look at this state of equilibrium as a graph. So we could maybe look at this state as a graph here. So here's a graph example of what this will look like. And so basically on the x-axis, you're gonna have reaction progress. And on the y-axis, you're gonna have concentration. Okay, and so what we can maybe notice is that at the very beginning, before we have anything being created, we only have the H2 and the Br2. So they're gonna have a, a concentration somewhere up here of whatever that value is, it's gonna be high. Now as the reaction proceeds, while the H2 Br and Br2 concentrations are gonna go down, and eventually they're gonna reach a constant level, and then the HBr concentration is going to start at zero because initially in our container, so let's imagine that this was our container here, and we entered H2 and Br2 into the container. Well, before the reaction starts, at the very beginning here, at time equals zero, there is no HBr. Okay, and then as the as the reactants uh, combine together to form HBr, the HBr concentration is going to go up. And it's going to reach a, reach a steady state, of, an equal concentration, a steady concentration. So we don't know exactly how far this goes up. This is just an example, but these these lines might go up way up here or down here. But they reach a constant level, and when that constant level is reached, which is about right, right about there, we call that a state of equilibrium. All right, and at that state of equilibrium, you have the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, and the concentration of all species there 
is going to be constant. Notice that these lines are straight here. That means that the equilibrium is going to be constant, or the concentrations are going to be constant, sorry. All right, so that's what a state of equilibrium is. All right, now there's another thing too. There's a, there's a way to measure mathematically how much product you're going to have compared to how much reactant. So where does this equilibrium lie? Do we have a lot of HBr or do, are we going to have a lot of H2Br2? And in that particular example, what we have to do is we have to use something called the equilibrium constant KEQ or sometimes in some textbooks you might see it as KC but let's just use KEQ here and so KEQ is a mathematical representation of a basically of a chemical reaction at equilibrium and if it's a mathematical representation, basically the KEQ is a ratio of the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. All right, so it's the concentration of the products divided by the reactants. And you can imagine that if the, if the value on top of the products had a bigger concentration than the reactants, then this K value, this constant, this mathematical number, is going to be a number bigger than one because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Whenever you take a number that's bigger on the top and divide it by the denominator that's smaller, you end up with a number greater than one. So if KEQ happens to be greater than one, then it's a product favored equilibrium. And your concentration of your product will be higher than the concentration of the reactants. If the KEQ is less than one, then it's going to be reactant favored. Okay, so that's what uh, KEQ is. It's a mathematical representation of a chemical reaction at equilibrium. And in general, basically if I have any reaction at equilibrium, let's say the coefficient is lowercase a, a plus lowercase b, b is in equilibrium with lowercase c, c plus lowercase d, d, where a, lowercase a, b, c, and d are just the coefficients, the molar ratios, then your KEQ will just equal the concentration of C, because that's a product. Remember that these are the products, and these are the reactants. And then the concentration of C to the power of lowercase c times the concentration of D to the power of D divided by the concentration of A to the power of A times the concentration of B to the power of B. That's going to be your KEQ formula. Very important there that you know that. Good idea maybe to memorize this for any chemistry course.